Hi friends and welcome to Wise vs. World. I'm Anya. I'm Jackie. And today we want to talk about our coming out stories. Exactly. Ooh, what kind of mysteries are we gonna unearth? <laughs> Spoiler alert. It's not gonna be that dramatic. So we want to talk about our coming out stories because in the social sphere it is a very very well-known part of the queer experience to have a coming out um, but sometimes it's not that big of a deal big of a deal exactly yeah. and we want to talk about our experiences which I think align more with the so um uh, this is the way I am and not the mom dad I'm gay there's no right way to be queer and there's no right way to have a coming out story and and there's no one way to come out coming out is it can look a million different ways because media especially focuses on this really big moment in someone's lives that kind of changes them mm. from being not out to being out or whatever exactly from yeah. being normal yeah to being gay so mm. I think all coming out stories are important and that's why I also want to highlight that it doesn't necessarily have to be a very big thing. For example, you might not relate to those kind of uh, big coming out moments, just as we may not always relate to that kind no. of stories. So we want to share ours, and not because they're grand, but... Uh... Exactly because they're not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and why don't you go first? Okay, I'll go first. For me, I was never really in the closet. It wasn't like um, I had this realization ever. It was just, I like girls well first it was like i like boys i guess because i was socialized to do that mm -hmm. and then um, i figured out i like girls too and then you figure out you liked uh feminine men and yeah, then it was exactly. like it was never really like um oh this feeling what in myself what is this i've never really related related to that kind of those no. kind of uh, narratives because I just don't know it. I, ju I was just, I like girls and I didn't have much thought about that in my head. So I didn't think about it a lot, a lot and, and I just carried on when I was uh, younger. So when I got my first girlfriend when I was 14 or 15, uh, the one before Jackie, <laughs> I told my mom that the friend I was bringing with me on vacation for a weekend wasn't my friend, but my girlfriend. Uh, and that we were in a relationship. And then my mom was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's your mom. Yeah. And then I said, oh, really? I thought maybe you would be angry. <laughs> and then she said, why would I be angry? I have friends who are lesbians. And then she made dinner and we ate dinner and then we didn't talk about it again. And that's kind of the only coming out moment I, I have. I guess because it, it was it had been built up to such a big thing, especially in media, I thought mm. then maybe it was I had to be nervous or something like that. Mm. I don't I don't really remember. It's like uh, more than a decade ago. Mm. Yeah. So Ooh. it's a little fuzzy around Ooh. the edges. <laughs> yeah, true. right. I just realized. <laughs> um, so the next coming out experience I had, I guess, was when I brought my second girlfriend home. Only this time it was. Uh, back when I had been dating her for one and a half years already and uh, my family thought it was a boyfriend and it turned out it was not. Um, it's Jackie, of course. It's a Jackie. That. It's a Jackie. Oh, <laughs> congratulations, you're having a Jackie. Thank you. <laughs> you start Monday at <laughs> Wow! Like, uh, the moment in doing that, as we have talked about before, it was kind of a gradual thing leading up to your transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do have the I have the memory of this specific time when we got home from a vacation and you came in your girl clothes for girl the first clothes. time. And uh, my whole family was there at home. No one really discussed it. We didn't talk about it. It wasn't a thing. No one said anything. It wasn't... It, nothing had changed. No one acknowledged it <laughs> in a bad or a good way. It was just there. And that that was fine to me. I liked that. That was pretty, uh, pretty neutral. Yeah, it was very neutral. <laughs> That's my story, I guess. Yeah, and I never really came out to my friends. I, I don't... I never said I'm this to my friends. I just brought my girlfriend along at some point and... So, yeah, I, I feel like I don't really have a coming out story. A bit underwhelming, right? A little bit underwhelming, yeah, maybe. Like, I'm not when, sure. when did you know? How did you come out? Yeah. The answer is just like, I was I already no idea. sort of there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that, especially because of that reason, I think there's a lot of media where especially the focus is on these coming out stories or coming of age stories for queer kids that is just 
never related to, and nah. especially as a child, I was like, that that isn't me. And it was a lot of like um, like people hating themselves and doubting themselves and having lo- all these complicated feelings about their sexuality. Mm. And I just never had that. No, I guess if you're so certain of yourself and if you grow up in an environment that's so accepting of whoever you are, mm. Why would you ever experience that? Yeah, exactly. You know, that's privilege for you. It is. And I'm happy about that. And I that's understand. why I'm sharing it as well. <laughs> True. Yeah. What about you? Well, I guess like I've had like a thousand different coming out. I've had ones that went from oh well to oh, you're lying. Come on. Come on. Just say you're not interested. You can't be a lesbian. So there wasn't like there wasn't one moment where you sat down with your family and said, "Listen guys, I'm trans." Not a not a big moment, not a big I have something to tell you, not the uh, the sliding a letter under someone's door or No, it was mostly like I started doing something and then after a certain amount of time I would say, "So, I guess you're wondering what's happening." It was like seventh or eighth grade. I had noticed that I found many different people attractive, like you know, men, women, gender non-conforming people, with you know, many different things appeal to me. So I guess that time I was like, well, I guess I'm bisexual, I think. And like since then, I've found out I'm mainly into women. I there are some men I like not that many of uh, it's, it's very <laughs> sexuality is so complicated guys I mean I'm anisexual I mean that's the, the way to put it really but as for the whole trans thing I don't remember what I wrote well my mom would set set us down from time to time be like oh I love you or stuff like that or if we saw uh, gay people on the television she would always make a point to say to us I will love you no matter who you love. As for coming out as trans, oh boy, that was a staggered release. I mean, it came in tiny increments. Tiny increments. I was telling like different people at uh, at the time when I I sort of figured I could not not. It, it was more like so okay, now I tell my bandmates, you know, now I tell them they they're cool guys. So they're used to the sort of idea of, you know, gender nonconformity, uh they'll be able to handle it. Then some other friends, then some here, then some there. And then of course at some point I had to tell Anya, uh and she took it so well and that was just it from there. I didn't actually tell my parents until sometime after I had left home and I lived with you guys for a while and and we came back and And I said, "Well, here's the deal, and this is what I'm going through, and this is what's going to happen." And there was some initial confusion because, like, being trans is, I guess, not the same as loving whoever I wanted to love. Uh, so we had to work through that. And I think somewhere during the past ten years, we have found a comfortable spot that we can be a family in, even though it was not always that easy. But like, I still remember the first time my parents called me their daughter. That was a really big moment for me. Not just well, I think they caught on at some point. It was like eh, sometimes it was she, sometimes it would it was he. So I think the only like real talk we had about it was exactly setting them down and be like, this is the name. They, these are the pronouns. If you want to see me or my girlfriend ever again, that's just something you're gonna have to get used to, or else it's. I just don't want to be part of your life. But there was no. Like the coming out moment in itself wasn't wasn't the big deal. There was no, no discussion it, about it or reaction to it or no. Just like with my sexuality, it yeah. just it just sort of manifested itself, and people were like cool with it. Yeah. Uh, but then, like as I said, I've had to come out. You've also had to come out like a thousand times. Whenever, like if it's someone calling with like insurance, if it's someone yeah. uh, like. Uh, whatever it may be we have had to have the internet installed well um i'm not at home but uh, uh my cast is at home and then they'll be like oh when is he blah 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 and then at some point you'd have to specify actually it's a she that's coming out a million and to all the classmates and exactly people you talk to and colleagues and stuff like that that's just part of it mm. and i think when we talk about coming out i think we're very quick to make it about the initial Uh, realization or the initial telling someone else about it and that's the significance of it mm. but I feel like we don't really well I feel like we talk about it but I don't feel like society as a whole it's like, like if you come out one time then it's fixed 
then everyone knows and you are fixed and you can yeah. go on with your life. And that's it's kind not, of the narrative not, that's built up, right? Exactly. It's not like we get like a rainbow tattooed on our no. forehead and then you can just say, oh, I see you're one of them. Yeah. Like if you're straight passing or cis passing, that is just something that as far as is relevant to do, you, you just have to come out again and again and again and again and again. And that's okay. That's a kind of privilege, even though it gets really old. Yeah. Like, yes. Let it rain down on you. Exactly. <laughs> Just give me my bagel. Come on. Yeah. yeah, that was it. That was our grand moments. Um, if you feel like it, you can tell us about yours in the comments. Maybe they're more interesting than ours. Maybe they have a bit more drama. Or maybe it's just people around you who are like, cool, so that's the deal, huh? What do you want to eat tonight? Maybe. So we hope you like this video and if you like this kind of content you can subscribe to our channel and if you want more of us you can find us on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you for watching and we hope to see you next time. Bye guys! Bye.